Usage rate. Over the years, this statistic has grew in popularity as a stat that intends to measure how many possessions a player uses up in a game. With Westbrook breaking the record for the highest single season usage rate in NBA history, it has now become somewhat of a mainstream analytical tool amongst NBA analysts. But unfortunately, many fans have huge misconceptions about this statistic, which is furthered by TV experts that toss around the word usage rate despite clearly not knowing how it's calculated or what it truly intends to show. So today, we'll address both those concerns and towards the end of the video, I'll talk about how usage rate connects Kobe, MJ, and Westbrook together. What's up guys, welcome to MDJ, my name is Mark. I'm excited to bring you guys the first series on this channel called NBA Advanced Statistics. In each episode, not only will I talk about the formula and math behind each statistic, but I'll also analyze how we should correctly use them. And talk about some interesting case studies where this statistic tells us something about a player or a basketball concept. So without further ado, usage rate. The first step here would be to clarify which version of usage rate we're talking about. The one that most of you are familiar with is the one that is defined in the glossary of basketballreference.com as well as ESPN.com, which is an estimate of the percentage of team plays used by a player while he was on the floor. The formula for usage rate is surprisingly simple. It takes into account an individual's minutes, field goal attempts, free throw attempts, and turnovers, and compares those categories to the entire team. Now, there are a couple things I want to point out here. First is that usage rate does not take into account assists, which is why I cringe every time someone says that usage rate is something that measures how often a player is involved in an offense. This is not a great explanation because without taking into account assists, a player like Chris Paul has a 24.4 usage rate, which ranks 70th in the league, even though we all know Chris Paul was extremely involved and crucial to basically every play the Clippers ran. So like we just said, it's not entirely accurate to say usage rate measures how involved or crucial a player is to the offense. And it's also not great to say that usage rate measures how often a player has the ball because that implies time of possession, which is a completely different stat. And this is something I've been guilty of too before I researched for this video, but no, usage rate has nothing to do with how often you actually have the ball in your hands. It just measures how much of a team's possession ends with a certain player's action. Let me explain this in an easier way. When you have the ball in your hands, there's only four things you can really do with it. You can shoot it, you can pass it, you can turn it over, or you can draw a foul. Technically, your team can also call a timeout, but that's statistically insignificant. So basically just four things. What usage rate does is it takes the three outcomes that end the position and takes those into consideration. All right, so now that we have a correct understanding of what usage rate is, let's see how it helps us understand some basketball concepts. First, I want to bring up two players that you've probably never heard of before. Kobe and Michael Jordan. What? Okay, so Kobe and MJ have multiple championships, multiple finals MVPs, but they all went through struggles before getting there. Michael Jordan couldn't make it to the finals till his seventh year in the league, but ironically, his best statistical season came during those times. His third year in the league, 37.1 points per game, which is just absolutely absurd, but his team wasn't good. 40 and 42 got swept by Boston in the first round. And as you can imagine, his usage rate was sky high, 38.3, which today is the fourth highest single season rating in NBA history. At number two all time is Kobe Bryant in 2006. Now, if you'll remember, this is when he already forced Shaq away and was trying to win a championship as the quote number one option, much like what Kyrie wants to do. Anyways, 2006 Kobe was undoubtedly his best statistical year, 35.1 points on a decent field goal percentage. This is the year he scored 81, had consecutive games scoring 50 plus points. It was nuts. But like MJ, his team just wasn't very good. And like MJ, he also lost in the first round. So you're probably wondering which two players are missing from the top four all-time usage rate seasons. Trick question. They're both Westbrook. The third all-time season was 2015 Westbrook. This was the year Kevin Durant missed the majority of the season with a broken foot. And without Durant there, Westbrook basically went crazy doing everything for the team. But they missed the playoffs that year as the ninth seed. Although compared to 2017 Westbrook, that 2015 Westbrook wasn't actually all that crazy by Westbrook standards. Last season, Westbrook broke the all-time usage rate with 41.7%, 3% higher than 2006 Kobe at number two. By the way, a 3% usage rate difference adds up to thousands of extra possessions over the course of an entire season. As we all know, the Thunder lost 4-1 against the Rockets in the first round, just like Kobe and MJ. So what this tells me is something pretty simple and intuitive, and that's that you can't have a player using up that many of the team's possessions. Forget the fact that when you shoot more, it's statistically proven that your efficiency goes down. Actually, forget all this number crap. Who cares about numbers? I do. 
But who cares about numbers? Let's just talk basketball. Most of us watching right now, we play basketball, casually or competitively. You know that when you don't get to touch the ball, you're not going to be good. If you're playing with 1987 Michael Jordan, who every time he touches the ball is going to shoot it or turn it over or draw a foul, he's making you worse, not better. So let's use this to segue to 2017 Westbrook since the season is still fresh on our minds. A while ago, I made a video about why triple doubles are overrated, pissed off a couple hundred Westbrook fans. Guys, again, I don't hate Westbrook. <laughs> I'm just critical of the way he played, and I'll show you why I criticize him using this usage rate stat. Okay, so the biggest statement defending Westbrook's do-it-all playstyle is that Westbrook had poor help. And this might shock you, I totally agree. Objectively speaking, Westbrook had a severe lack of consistent shooters around him, which is a huge problem when building your offense around a player that penetrates and draws double teams in the paint. If Westbrook had Eric Gordon and Trevor Reza, he'd probably average three less points, but maybe three more assists with a better efficiency, which would have made him a better overall player. That's fair. But here's what I believe is criticism that is also fair, and it's what I said all season long. History has shown that with a player playing like that, using that much of a team's possessions, you're not going anywhere. Freaking Kobe and MJ tried to do that and it didn't work. They weren't even close to contending. So now you might ask, well, Westbrook didn't really have a choice. That's not true. You always have a choice. In this case, knowing that with the way you were playing, your team was guaranteed to not be very good, why not try playing differently? Why not give Oladipo more chances? Look, regardless of your opinion on Oladipo, he's the second overall pick. He averaged 18 in his second year. The guy has immense potential, especially as a second option, not as a first option. But we never even got the chance to see whether or not he could have fulfilled that potential as the second option because Westbrook was too busy using up 40% of his team's possessions despite the blatant fact that you can't win jack shit playing like that. This is, of course, from the perspective of winning championships. Now, every player always says that winning is their number one priority, even though we all know that's not always true. Sometimes your number one priority is Khloe Kardashian. So to me, either one of two things happened to the Thunder. A, Westbrook and OKC's coaching staff. And, and by the way, I would place equal blame onto OKC's coaching staff because this has a lot to do with the way the offense was designed around Russell Westbrook. So A, either Westbrook or OKC's coaches were so caught up in themselves and for whatever reason, never bothered to take a look at the failures of superstars who have attempted to do too much or attempted to do what Westbrook did. Or B, Westbrook valued getting MVP more than having a better chance at being a legit contender. Again, I'm not saying that if Westbrook played differently, the Thunder would have guaranteed to have been contenders. That's not what I'm saying. All I'm saying is that history tells you what you're doing doesn't work. So why did they not try something different that at least had a slight chance, however small chance that might be, for the team to at least be better than just a first round exit? Look, I'm certainly not one to judge what Westbrook wants. I think it's totally fair if a player thinks that an MVP trophy is more valuable than a ring because it's much harder to win MVP than it is to win a championship. And I'm also not one to judge what Thunder management wanted. Maybe they were more concerned about filling the stadium and selling tickets, which the surefire way to do that is to let Westbrook chase triple doubles every single night. I get it. Money matters. I totally understand especially for a small market team like Oklahoma City. But from the perspective of contending, which is the ultimate goal from a fan's perspective, our perspective, usage rate painted a clear picture that Oladipo, Steven Adams, and the team as a whole was doomed to fail. And Westbrook slash OKC made the exact same mistake MJ and Kobe made, which is trying to do too much. Alright guys, that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I'd love to know what you thought of the video. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Leave it down in the comment section below or better yet, tweet me at MarkDJian. I'll leave my Twitter down in the description below. Also letting you guys know, I'm probably going to do a video on ball hogs in the future. So talking about Kobe, Carmelo, Allen Iverson, whether or not these guys were actually ball hogs. In there, I'm going to talk a little bit about usage rate, which is kind of why I made this video first. But I'm also going to talk about a lot of other stuff. And I think it's going to be really, really interesting because no one has really talked about whether or not ball hogs exist. Maybe by the time you're watching this video, it's already out. Either way, if it is out, I'll link it down in the description below as well as a card right up here. Other than that, my name is Mark, aka MDJ, and I'll see you next time. Peace.